Hello everyone, I'm Josh Garrett and in this video I'm going to be talking about the implications of tax on returns. In one of my previous videos and blogs on mutual funds, I discussed about mutual funds fees and expenses and the impact they have on the returns. However, mutual fund fees and expenses are exclusive to the fund itself. But what about the implications of tax on returns? That is what we are going to be discussing today in this video. First of all, how are mutual funds taxed? Whenever you make a profit from mutual funds, it is supposed to be taxed. There are two types of profit. When you sell your mutual fund units for more than you paid for, that is a profit called capital gains. Then there are dividends. A part of mutual fund house profit shared with investors based on the amount of units they own. All of these profits are taxed by the government. But how much is determined by certain factors? Let us first understand dividend taxation. Dividends from mutual funds are taxed based on your income tax lab rate. This which ended the dividend distribution tax that companies used to pay. Now dividends are directly added to your taxable income and you will pay tax according to your income bracket. For example, if you fall under the 15 lakhs tax bracket, your dividends will be taxed at 30%. This applies to all types of mutual funds including equity, debt and hybrid funds. Next, taxation on capital gains. Here's the thing. How long you hold on to your mutual fund matters for these taxes. Short term capital gains is when you sell your equity funds within a year, you will pay 15% of the profit. Meanwhile, for long term capital gains, if you hold it for more than a year, you will only pay 10% on profits over 1 lakh rupees. For debt funds, because of the updated rule, all gains are taxed according to your income slab, no matter how long you hold them. Then, what about SIPs? SIPs or systematic investment plans are a popular way to invest in small amounts. But when you sell, each SIP installment is treated separately. So if you have been investing monthly for a year, the first month's units might be taxed as long term but the later ones could be short term. Then finally, a tiny extra tax. It's called the securities transaction tax. This is just a very small tax, just 0.001% that you will have to pay when you buy or sell equity or hybrid fund units. It's a very small fee, but it's good to know about. Finally, in conclusion, the basics of mutual fund taxation in India. Remember, the longer you hold on to your investments, the less tax you'll pay on your profits. If you're getting used to this, don't hesitate to ask a tax expert for help. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more simple financial videos. Thank you for watching.